Well, hello again, and here I am with another Views from the Veranda. I've taken myself inside today because it's a bit of a blustery, windy day. And also the fact that, as I mentioned last week, I was trying to get a recent seller out on the veranda with me to share their experiences about selling. But everyone's very shy about talking in front of a camera. Um, I think people's view on public speaking is just as stressful as, uh, as selling a home. Which is the reason why I wanted to sort of talk to you today is because um, I'd like to share with you my top 10 tips in selling a home and taking some of the stress out of selling and ensuring you get the best possible price. So firstly, it is about price. Price your home right. Um, take time to understand the market. Uh, too high a price and no one will buy. So it's very important for you to consider the facts that are happening in the market, the sales that are happening, compare them to your own property and have a good, honest sort of discussion with your agent about what the value really is. The biggest mistake an owner can have is they love their property, so they have a very different opinion of its value than the market and buyers out there. So buyers start logically and they finish emotionally. So it's very important to get as many buyers engaged in looking at the property as possible. And that happens initially with your price guide that you promote to the marketplace. So it's important to get as many buyers looking at your property and price is an important factor of that. Secondly, have a strategy around marketing your home. And, and a strategy isn't the internet. That's just one of the sources that people use to find your property. After selling thousands of homes in the Shire, uh, I've met many, many buyers and they've all come from various different sources. So it's very important to have a very comprehensive plan around communicating and promoting your property to the marketplace because it's about the number of buyers that see the property that creates the market energy, which in turn will deliver you a better price, guaranteed. So you only get one chance to sell a property, so you need to get it right. Um, so yes, the internet is important. Photography obviously is important, using videos, neighborhood campaigns, letterbox drops in the area, using your agent's database the most effectively way, signage, um, editorial, uh, you need to have a comprehensive view about uh, targeting hot buyers as well. And obviously you need to have the absolute best agent working for you as well. So thirdly, present your home like you don't live in it. Uh, that's probably a little bit of an exaggeration, but um, living, looking at a home that feels lived in is probably important. But a buyer has to feel that it can be their own home and not someone else's. So in some cases, you need to really depersonalize your property. Uh, most of the time, owners will use a stylus, and that's a good thing to get the best advice. Because um, buyers are looking to instantly connect with your home, and they can do that by how the home is actually presented. And if you can create a wow factor as far as uh, presentation, well, that's very important. So styling is about maximizing the space and also the flow within the property. And flow means equally as important as creating that feeling of space. Someone can easily walk around the property. So talk to an agent about getting a stylus because that's something you should really seriously consider. The fourth point <laughs> relates to agents again is um, we really are different. Uh, the right agent can make a massive difference to the final price that you achieve. Um, sometimes an owner picks a uh, an agent because they like them, which is good. I think it's important that you do sort of feel right uh, having that sort of agent working for you. But more importantly, you need to drill down on things like their skill sets, the way they negotiate, the process that they use to deliver the best possible price. And one of the most important questions you can ask an agent is how are you going to protect the price? Um, so the way they answer that and the tools that they use to actually ensure that they do protect your price will give you an idea of whether they're the best agent for you. Um, remember, this is one thing when selecting an agent, but you need to also understand that you're actually basing that decision on what they're telling you and what they're showing you. So the quality of the information and the way they actually communicate with you will also be very important. So fifthly, um, be real. Um, not everyone is going to love your home. So don't be discouraged by that. Uh, it's just feedback that you're getting and you need to take it on board as feedback. 
And the most important feedback you can get, in fact, is from buyers that are actively looking in the market at this particular time. So you need to adjust based on the feedback you receive. Um, obviously, you're going to get feedback from various sources. Uh, firstly, neighbours and friends. They're probably not the right people to actually get uh, some advice on because they're only going to tell you what you want to hear. Um, buyers that aren't interested in your property but are actively in the market, they'll give you a very logical, fair view on price because obviously they're not looking to secure the property. And lastly, you've got buyers who are interested in your property. And in fact, they're probably going to give you a slightly lower indication on price because they want to get it at the lowest possible price. So the sixth point is about agents again and uh, relating to area specialists. It's very important to use someone who knows your local area. You might know an, a good agent outside of the area, but they're not necessarily say they can give you the best possible result. Um, it's very important to have an agent that um, is, has knowledge of what's been selling, why it's been selling. Um, that, that'll give them a very good idea on value in terms of communicating to buyers as well. And from that point of view, a local agent will have a good network of buyers to call on in addition to that. Uh, so the seventh point is um, you might find that you're looking to use a friend who's an agent. Well, that's a bit of a delicate one. You know, friends are friends and what you really need to do is have an agent that approaches this as a business transaction to get you the best possible result. And sometimes that involves some awkward discussions and giving you some hard facts. Uh, that can ruin a very good relationship with a friend. So my advice would be to stay away and use your friends for advice, but not in terms of selling the property. Um, the eighth point is about the 30 day rule. That's really important. Um, you're gonna get your best buyers and you're gonna sell in the first 30 days if you get everything right. Um, the reason why that is the case is because buyers these days engage with your property and access your property very quickly via the internet and other sources. So they will come, they'll inspect the property, they'll review the contract and they'll actually make offers. So usually when you don't get offers during the, that, the early period, then it's mainly driven by price or possibly something that's not quite right about the property that possibly can be fixed. Which leads me on to the ninth point, which is about adjusting early. Um, a lot of times I hear that we've only just got on the market, it's early days yet. Meaning that the market hasn't been responding to the property at a price level and you haven't received an offer. Well, I mean, market momentum is everything. So you're gonna get, as I said, your best buyers probably in the first two weeks. Um, and if they haven't given you an indication on price, and that's probably telling you that you're a bit overpriced. So you need to take that on board. And don't say that we haven't received any offers so therefore, how can I make a decision on price? It's the fact that you haven't received an offer is a very good indication about your price. So work closely with the agent um, and move through this as fast as you can because you need to be able to adjust early. Otherwise, you don't want to be just left on the market because the longer a property is on the market, a lesser buyer feels they need to pay. So my last point is after you've done your work, just relax. You've obviously presented the property in the best possible way. You think you've priced it right. You've got the best strategy around communicating to buyers out there. So hand it back to the agent and let them do the stress. Let them work on the property. Sit back and watch the buyers come in. So that's my view uh, about selling your home and some of the tips. Obviously, if you need any advice in this regard, contact us, message us. That's what we're here for. But uh, hopefully next week, I, over, the, over the coming weeks, I will be bringing more people onto the veranda who probably aren't quite as shy to give their views on what's happening on the property market. But until then, take care and look after each other. Thanks.